Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this phone call with faith leaders today from Mayor Randall Woodfin in his office. Uh, we will be getting momentarily. I just wanted to let everybody know that we were on the line. And uh, a reminder for you, if you have a question during this call, please press 7, and our screeners will get on the line with you, and we'll take your questions, and we will go through as many as possible. Thank you so much for your leadership in our community, and thank you for joining us for this call. We will begin momentarily. Good morning again, everyone. My name is Rick Journey. I serve as Director of Communication for Randall, Mayor Randall Woodfin. Uh, I am going to serve as the moderator for the call today. Um, we have a number of people who are going to be on this line. We thank you all for being with us. We thank you for your leadership in your communities, your, your churches, and thank you for what you're doing for our community. Uh, we are going to a reminder once again, if you have a question during this call, press 7 on your keypad. You will be immediately sent to a screener who will take your question and we will try to address as many as possible. Now, let me uh, introduce to you uh, Mayor Randall Woodfin's Chief of Staff, Cedric Sparks. Well, good morning, leaders of our faith community. Thank you so much for being on this call. <clears throat> Thank you for what you mean to our community. Um, certainly in times like these, your leadership is critical. Um, Mayor Woodfin is attending a special call meeting of the Birmingham City Council right now. And we're very hopeful that he will be able to join us, um, hopefully, very soon. However, he wants the call to move forward, and we still have um, some very important information that we want to share with you. Um, this is the third straight week that we've had an open dialogue about how our faith community is affected and, um, and how we should respond collectively to the crisis at hand. So we're going to be sharing information with you about, especially for those faith leaders who were not a part of the first call, just to bring you up to speed on what's been done to date as well as plans moving forward. Um, however, we always want to begin decent and in order. Um, and so we have on the line with us Pastor Mike McClure Sr., who's going to open us up for the word of prayer, um, and then we'll get to the matter at hand. Pastor McClure. Thank you so much, Dr. Sparks. We really appreciate this opportunity. We now ask that one to join us in prayer. Eternal and gracious God, our Father, we come now, uh, beseeching thee, uh, that thou wouldst visit us in this hour. Keep us, God, our hearts and our minds stayed on you, for your word declares that he that keepeth his mind stayed on you, that you would keep us at perfect peace. We thank you now for the leadership of our city and the staff. We thank you for all those that are working together, God, to put the information in the airways, God, that there be no fear, but we will all operate in faith. Thank you now for the faith community, oh God, all the men and women of God that are working together to ensure that your will is done. We honor and bless and we praise you now for all these things been done decently and in order. Now, God, we're praying that the blood that flowed from Jesus' cross will continue to cover us all. Keep us, God. Keep us healed. Keep us delivered. Keep us staying in right standing with you. And in the end of all these proceedings, God, once the victory is assuredly won, we will be careful to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In the strong, precious, and powerful name of your son, Jesus, we all pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor McClure, um, and thanks to each of you for keeping us lifted up, um, asking for the Lord's hedge of protection to be around us. Please continue to keep us, as well as all of our citizens, lifted up in prayer. Um, on our last call, and again, this is our, our third straight week, on our last call, May Whitman primarily talked about um, protocols that the Jefferson County Department of Health recommended specifically for our faith leaders to institute. And we have Dr. Wes Williford on the line with us today. Um, he's going to be a part of the call to answer specific questions about protocols um, that you can continue to institute to make sure that not only do you keep your congregants safe, but that we also can, um, you can assist us with making sure that the word gets out into the community as well. Um, but specifically within our faith community, we know that there are social norms, norms that you employ. Um, Hugging, holding hands, kissing, 
um, people especially want to be next to their faith leader during this time um, to, for just reassurance. So we needed to make certain that we communicated specifically to you. Since that time, the mayor has done a few things. One, he's issued a state of emergency. He's issued an executive order. And as of yesterday, the mayor recommended and the Birmingham City Council adopted a shelter in place. Um, why is that important? Well, to date, 12 days ago, we had no reported cases of COVID-19 in the state of Alabama. As of today, in the state of Alabama, we have 242 cases. In Jefferson County, we have 98 cases. And in our city, just specifically at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, the county has been um, very careful to not list the number of cases in individual cities has been listed by county. But just as a point of reference for you, at UAB we have 40 plus individuals right now at UAB and 18 of those are on ventilators. And again, it's important that we absolutely communicate to those who are what we believe the most vulnerable. So we had to implement um, a shelter in place. What does that mean? Th there are two things primarily that we want you to take from the implementation of the shelter in place because we know that there have been a lot of questions about it. The first thing is the goal. It's meant to eliminate gatherings of 10 or more people to ensure that we're doing our part to eliminate community spread. What we've noticed is that there has been um, almost routine um, routine activities as though uh, we're not in crisis mode. So we still have people who are out playing sporting events, basketball, soccer, things like that, where they're in contact with one another. We're still having cookouts, fellowship gatherings in the park. Um, and what's happening is that people are still in contact with one another. They don't know if they're carrying, and they're also taking that back to their family. So the first thing is admit, it's meant to eliminate community gatherings um, to avoid community spread. The second thing is for businesses. The Jefferson County Department of Health has provided a list of essential and non-essential businesses. The thing that we need to communicate is if you're not listed as a non-essential business, then you're able to continue to move forward. It's probably the easiest way to clarify what's, what's meant for those um, who have questions about whether or not it applies to them. Short answer is if you were open yesterday, you're still open today. So those two things, if there's um, any clarity that's needed on what the shelter in place is meant to do, it's meant to eliminate gatherings so that we can avoid community spread, and it's meant to ensure that those who are, who were, if, you were, if you were working yesterday, you keep working today. If you're not listed on the non-essential list, you keep moving forward. What does that mean for your individual houses of faith? You're still able to do streaming services. So yes, you're, you're still open. Um, we, we absolutely need it during this time where you're communicating um, to your congregants and not only your congregants, but for those who just need that reassurance that you all, um, that you all offer. Um, you're also still able to do your feeding programs. We just ask that you employ the recommendations of social distancing um, and that we absolutely now follow um, the executive orders and the shelter in place, the, the, what's listed in the shelter in place. Um, why is it important for the mayor to have this call with you? And then we'll, we'll make sure we open up the floor for questions. Um, it's for a number of reasons. One, it's for your protection. Again, we just know that during this time, people seek out their faith leaders for reassurance, um, something that they can hold on to to remind them that it's going to be okay. So they're going to want to touch you. Um, they're going to want to be among the fellowship of the unashamed. They want to, they're going to want to be with a body of believers that, that feel the way that they feel for reassurance as well. So they're going to want to hug. They're going to want to hold hands as they pray. They're going to want to um, hug and kiss each other. Um, but we feel that at this time that that does not assist us with avoiding community spread. Um, for your point of reference, there is a story today about a pastor in Arkansas and his wife and 30 plus of their members who have all been diagnosed um, with COVID-19. And they don't know where they contracted it, but it, they were just, they've just been doing the normal services that they've been doing. And so when we see that, Mayor Woodson is absolutely concerned about each of you and the roles that you play. So that's the reason the shelter in place is in place. 
Um, it's again for your protection that we'd ask again that as you continue to do um, as you continue to do the work that you do, as you continue to do your streaming services, feeding programs, please communicate to members to abide by the shelter in place. So I'll stop there because we certainly wanted to leave as much time as possible to answer questions that you may have. Um, we'll do our best to answer them. And again, we have Dr. Wes Williford on the line from the Jefferson County Department of Health to help um, answer those questions as well. So we are about to open up questions, but as we have been doing with a number of these Teletown Halls, we would like to get some feedback from you. So we have some questions we would like to ask for you. Before I read the first question that you can respond to, another reminder for you, if you have a question for us, press 7 on your keypad and a screener will get on the line and take your question. We have some on deck that I'm about to turn to, but here's a question we would like to get feedback from you on. How are you currently hosting church services during COVID-19? Press one if in person, and we're, we're setting that up, so I'm gonna kind of read this slowly. How are you currently hosting church services during COVID-19? You will press one for in person, you will press two for online, you will press three if not hosting services at this time. Once again, how are you currently hosting church services during COVID-19? Press one in person, press two for online, press three for not hosting services at this time. We will give you three minutes to respond to this. I will make a final reminder for you and then we'll close this question out and continue on. Our first question on this line, and uh, if Chief Sparks is okay, I will, I will uh, invite uh, Dr. Williford to address this question as well. But the first question is, are churches allowed on Sundays to have five or less people come in and screen the service, or should we only record messages from our home? Dr. Williford? So if I understand the, correct, the question correctly, so are people allowed to come in and stream the service as long as it's below that 10 threshold? Is that, is that, is that the question? Yes, yes. So, so that, 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 that's very reasonable. You know, if, if, as long as you're able to make that six feet distance between them and limit contact, that, that's, I think that's an amazing idea, actually. I think that's a really, really good idea uh, to, to get the church service out. Okay, Dr. Williford, I'm going to ask uh, another question here. Uh, I am aware that we are not to touch individuals, but can you touch people if you have gloves on? So that, that that's a that's the thing that we we run into a little bit because gloves are gloves can be useful in certain situations, um, but when, when you, really when you're talking about hugging someone, really the the issue is where, where, where you're sort of breathing each other's air fairly close to one another, and uh, it, it kind of increases the chance that um, a virus droplet could come in, come in contact with you as a person and come into contact with your lungs. Um, the gloves, they, they, they kind of provide protection for uh, whenever a person is touching another person, but as far as like allowing a, a hug to proceed, it, it probably wouldn't provide a lot of protection if you're just wearing the gloves. Okay, uh, reminder, we're about to go to our next question. Thank you, Dr. Williford, but a reminder that we're closing out this first question. Uh, once again, if you haven't answered, how are you currently hosting church services during COVID-19? Press 1 for in-person, press 2 for online, press 3 for not hosting services at this time. We'll give you 30 seconds to respond one more time, and then uh, we will close that one out. Let's go to, and this, I've got a couple that deal with the same thing, so I'm going to kind of touch on these. One is how many people can gather. This is actually a very interesting and good question. How many people can gather to stream a service? as in workers, and can congregates gather to watch the stream? Dr. Well, I think uh, uh, Chief Sparks is about to speak. So, and then I'll punt to Dr. Williford <clears throat> if he has any follow-up. So we, we recommend the 10-person maximum for any gathering. So for, um, for those who are employed or who work for your house of faith who are coming in to stream the services, we still recommend only 10. We also do not recommend that people gather for the streaming because, again, the goal is to minimize contact, is to um, reduce any possible chance that we can to, um, to exacerbate community spread. So to us, gathering to watch the streaming is, is almost the same as gathering for a service. So we recognize that there may be limited capacity for, for some of our, your members 
to actually use streaming services because of technology. Um, in those instances, we ask that you still keep the number below the 10 threshold. Remember who are the most vulnerable and make certain that those members are not in contact with one another, but please keep the number to 10 and below. Um, and I'm also pleased to announce that our mayor has joined us at this time. So questions and answers from this point forward would be facilitated by Dr. Wes Williford and Mayor Randall Woodson. Uh, just, just to clarify too, uh, because I know somebody, I want Dr. Williford to respond to this. Uh, the question, is it limited to 10 or is it 10 or, or, or is the limit 10, is limited to 10 or is it 10 or more? I'm not quite sure how that is, but, but just, just Dr. Williford, go, I'm, I'm a little unclear with the wording of this. Uh, but just talk a little bit about that rule, the, ten, the, 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 the limit on 10. Yeah, so, so, so the, the gathering should, should be no more than 10. 10 would be the, the maximum number. Um, and again, the, the reason that number is chosen, it, it, it's, it's really aimed at trying to minimize the number of people in the same spot at the same time. Um, and, and again, it, it, it comes back to the fact that the, the more people that are together that come from different places, if one person has uh, the virus, and maybe spreads it to, 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 to a few people in that group, the larger the group, the more people can go back and spread the virus further to their families, their, their networks of people. And so the, the, the number 10 it really is just meant to keep as reasonable of a number for gatherings while still trying to limit the impact of the virus. Thank you, Dr. Williford. Uh, we have another question, streaming services. Are you still able to stream worship services? The answer is yes. Um, let me start by saying good morning to all the faith leaders on this call. I apologize for not being on the call when you all started. There was a special call, call there was a special call city council meeting uh, that was set um, after we had already committed to this call so it was hard to be in two places at the same time. The answer is yes. I understand that many of you all have streaming services, which, re which requires you and, and your staff to be in your actual place of worship to set up for your members and con congregants to be able to view from their device. So the answer is yes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next question is, what is the recommended procedure for funerals and graveside services? Dr. Williford, do you want to weigh in on that one? Sure, and I know this is this is probably one of the one of the hardest things that we have to deal with in this social distancing in our in our attempts to control COVID nineteen is the fact that you know life and death continue on as they would normally, and and, and of course a, f a funeral service, a graveside service is is one of the one of the most heartfelt things and one of the hardest things that we have to do uh, in, in our lives. And I think that the, the the numbers we really have to try to to limit that that number as much as possible and limiting it to that ten threshold where we can, and and that that that's hard because a lot of people have so many connections in their lives and they are so important to so many people. But the concern is is that depending on you know the 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 group, it could be a, a large a large group of people coming to mourn for someone. Uh, could have a lot of vulnerable people in it, and a few people get the virus, and and we, we could lose more. And, and so I know that that is exceptionally exceptionally difficult to want to limit those numbers. But again, it's all in the interest of trying to preserve life where we can. Thank you, Dr. Williford. Our next question, if the governor is stating 25 and Birmingham is saying 10, where is the disconnect? I wouldn't necessarily call it a disconnect. I want everybody to know that the, the, the governor um, um, gets her advice and counsel from the Alabama um, State Health Director. The city of Birmingham and the mayors in, Bur in Jefferson County um, get their direction, advice, and counsel uh, from Dr. Williford, Dr. Mark Wilson, and others who are, who are the leadership team of the Jefferson County Health Department. You all should also know, too, um, that the powers of the Jefferson County um, Health Department and those of Mobile Health Department are a little different than, other, than the other remaining 65 counties in the state 
uh, based on our population and things being a little different here as far as statutory power. Then the third thing, and this is probably the most important, the reason why it's 10 here is because of all the cases in the state, we have a minimum of half the cases and we have more of reason to be concerned that community spread actually exists here in our county. Um, and because we have such a rapid rate, because we have such a already swell on our medical field related to our hospitals, then what happens here is gonna look very differently from the remaining of the 67, 66 counties in the state. Uh, Dr. Williford, you're more than willing to add to that. Exactly, and I know that the you know like you said the the composition of the health department sort of we, we we have we have a bit more leeway for our local area than than other so like you said Mobile and Jefferson County are, are we have our own health departments that that are we work with the state but we we are we have a little bit of a different uh, composition than the state we're, we're, the, the other counties in the state that are run their health departments are run by the state um, but I, I I would I would say that. You know, and Gov Governor Ivey is, is is kind of looking at the state in general, but w with with the numbers that that, that she has put out, um, and the, the, again, our as as Mayor Woodman said, our numbers are much higher, and our, our local circumstances are different. Thank you, Dr. Wilford. Our next question of survey question that we would like to ask of you, and you have three minutes to respond to this: Is your church offering any of the following services? One. Press 1 for food pantry, press 2 if daycare, or press 3 for senior care, senior services. Once again, is your church offering any of the following services? Press 1 for food pantry, press 2 for daycare, and press 3 for senior care, senior services. Uh, we will have that question open for about three minutes, um, and uh, you can answer that. I'll remind you one more time, and then we will close that question out. We have another question here. And I would like, based on the uh, shelter in place uh, ordinance that was passed yesterday, I would like for the mayor to begin with this, and then if we could get Dr. Williford on this call as well afterwards. Are we looking at a projected time for quarantine or shelter in place? Um, right now we have the April 3rd date. Uh, that could be modified either way. If things get better, I can see lifting that date prior to April 3rd. If things progress in a manner that is not deemed um, healthy for this community and this city, and those numbers continue to increase because of community spread, then I can also see the April 3rd date be extended. Dr. Wilford, would you like to talk about projected timelines? Yeah, and, and, and I agree completely. It, it is one of those things that we're going to have to make the decision as we come closer to those dates. And one of the things that we, we from a public health standpoint, that we're really going to need to see is that instead of the cases and the hospitalizations continuing to e increase uh, at a rapid rate, what we want to see is where the, the, the case numbers begin to go down, uh, the hospitalizations begin to go down, something to give us an indication that we're getting on the other side of this. Um, and, and this is perhaps the hardest thing in, in, in the actions that, that, that have been taken in Jefferson County and in the city of Birmingham, is that the actions themselves, because of the nature of the virus, the, tr the full benefit of it is going to take at minimum a week to see, at least to begin to see the initial effect of the benefit from it. And, and the reason that is, is so when someone has COVID-19, so the, and maybe, they've, maybe they've picked it up from someone else, as soon as you're exposed to the virus, a, a countdown clock starts. And that countdown clock is five or six days before a person begins to have symptoms. And then usually around day eight, day nine is when the, uh, they begin that maybe if they're going to be sick enough to be in the hospital that they have to go to the hospital. So I'll, uh, to say that, I just mean, mean to say that whenever we're trying to avoid people, there, there's going to be a lag time in seeing the benefit of the actions. And so I, I do urge patience in that because by the nature of the virus, it is hard to see the fruits of our labor. Thank you, Dr. Williford. Just a reminder, our second question, is your church offering any of the following services? Press one for food pantry, press two for daycare, press three for senior care, senior services. Uh, you have 30 seconds to answer that question, and then we'll move on to another question uh, momentarily. Now let's turn to our next question, and Dr. Williford, I would like you to address this because I know you've been involved in this. Uh, your department has been involved with this. 
there is a blood drive sponsored by the American Red Cross. Is that okay? So the blood drives right now are so critically important. Um, this is basically what's happened is that because of the because of us trying to in, institute social distancing, uh, the the normal flow of people coming in to give blood has been disrupted, and places like places like the large hospitals here in Birmingham. Uh, they they go through a lot of that blood in a given day for various reasons, whether that's car wrecks and trauma, whether that's um, someone needing uh, blood for uh, as, a, as a complication of uh, chemotherapy for cancer treatment. There there are many reasons that a person needs blood, but but the supply has not been um, has not been maintained uh, just because of these these issues. So what I would say is is that if for for a blood drive as long as we're able to maintain the social distance i think that's one of the greatest community goods that we can uh we can work towards right now because it, it again it's another measure that saves many many lives thank you dr williford got another question here where there are gatherings of 10 or less individuals is it necessary to keep a roll or attendance sheet in case something were to happen in the future. Dr. Williford, do you have an, an, an opinion on that? I would say it, 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 it's by no means absolutely necessary, but it's not a bad idea. Um, so, for instance, uh, let, let me give you an example. So my, my department here at the Jefferson County Department of Health, we do what we call contact tracing, where if someone uh, is found to have a test positive for COVID-19, uh, we try to figure out, okay, well, who were you in contact with and, like, how were you in contact with them? And that includes if they were at their job, if they were at their home, um, if they were out with their friends. Certainly, if, there, if there's a, a, a gathering that has 10 or fewer people um, if, if it's just as so much as a sign-in, that could prove useful to us because that, that could help us track people down if they've been meaningfully exposed and help us uh, work to contain the disease. So, again, not required, but certainly helpful. Thank you. Our next question, don't mean to be picking on you, Dr. Williford, but I think it's important that we hear from you on this particular, these particular questions. Uh, the next one is how many tests are taking place daily in Birmingham? what is needed to expand testing capacity, and what efforts are being taken to locate testing sites in low-income neighborhoods in Birmingham. That is, one, that is a concern that is on the forefront of our minds right now. Um, as it stands at the moment, uh, Dr. Wilson is working diligently with uh, uh, UAB uh, to, to help, helping to, to, to sort of prop up their central site as probably being our main site for referral. But we're also working with uh, St. Vincent's East, UAB West, trying to set up additional sites in the county. However, the move is probably going to be to have have those operations continue to, to not be as uh, quite as large as UABs. And the reason for that really comes down to the personal protective equipment that's required for that. And so for a person to actively care for someone who has COVID-19 uh, in the hospital, they have to have an N95 mask, which is, which is something that people have heard about is, is in very short supply, face shields, a gown that's disposable, and gloves. Um, the, 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 the reality is, is that these large health systems are very limited on the amount of, of those supplies because the supply chains have been disrupted. Um, and so to do the testing, you also have to use those same, uh, uh, th 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 those same things, the, the mask, the shield, the, the gown, the gloves. Um, and so we're, we're trying to be as conservative as we can with the, 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 the amount of personal protective equipment that we use but also still trying to provide community testing. Um, and, but again, that is something that we, we, again, we are actively partnering with these large health systems to open up additional test sites where we can and as quickly as we can. But it, it's something that has been, uh, it's been an ongoing process. It, 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 there's still a lot, lot, of, lot to work out with it. Thank you, Dr. Wolford. I know just as a follow-up to that, one uh, pastor has asked, uh, can churches offer testing for those that, that, that do not have access to go to the other locations? I think that just to make sure that your response essentially addresses that, addresses that correct, correct? I, 
I, I think if there if there's a capacity if if we if you know if we have a, a partnering medical agency that can help with that, I think that's something that could be very welcome, um, and, and certainly glad to to to, to coordinate uh, with any pastors that that that, that have. Uh, have access to that 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 sort of space, uh, but again, we we we've got to work out uh, kind of the the logistics of making sure that uh, one we're we're covering the areas that need to be covered, which is something we've got to expand on. But two, making sure that we have the staff and the personal protective equipment needed to do that efficiently and well. So a reminder for the folks who are on the line: we have well over a hundred people on the call right now. If you have a question. Uh, for this call, please press 7 on your dial pad. That's press 7 on your dial pad. You will instantly go to a screener who will uh, take your question and we will be able to follow up on it. With that, I would also like for us to ask our next question to you. Is your church currently offering members specialized services in response to COVID-19? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. Once again, the question, is your church currently offering members specialized services in response to COVID-19? Press one for yes, press two for no. That question will be open for about three minutes. I'll make a final reminder and then we'll move on to the next question. Uh, our next question from callers is since churches and faith establishments have, uh, have restricted numbers of people, why is, it, why is it that the same for Walmart, grocery stores, et cetera? I would say that has been one of the toughest things that we've been dealing with because you're right, the, 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 you know, those have been left as, as essential services. But the problem that has developed is that people going in to buy, there hasn't been a lot of regulation on the number of people in, in a particular area at one time. Now, as long, you know, so let's take a large grocery store. Um, the, the, the the number ten. Uh, is something that it, it, it may be hard to have just 10 people in at once, but if, if, if effective distancing can be utilized there and the trip is brief, then a person's risk remains very low. But that, the reason we've, we, we wanted those, those areas still open is because otherwise we're very afraid that we would cripple people's ability to, to, to obtain food, to, to obtain nourishment. And, and so that's why areas like that have remained open. And, of course, you'll have other kind of big box stores, so to speak, that have, have been open. But again, it, it's, main, it's more so focused on the, the items that are necessary for health and wellness uh, to be able to keep things functioning as, as long as we can. But that is something that, need, that we're going to have to work on a little bit more is to find better systems to keep either people from congregating outside or having too many people inside at once because, again, that, 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 that also increases the chance of spreading COVID-19. I think it's also important to add that a lot of the um, this is not a compare and contrast situation as it relates to a church or a place of faith, faith physical space versus a a box store that sells an essential service. I think one of the things we've seen is that they have continued to clean the buggies to make sure when um, the buggy is put back in the rack before another customer touches it. I think the biggest difference you see between a store that's selling essentials such as grocery versus a um, place of faith um, in the store, we're only with we only are by ourselves or with a family member. We're not necessarily having physical contact or in personal space of another customer. Um, versus if you are at a place of faith, uh, there's more tendency for an intentional social gathering. And at a minimum, we hold hands, we shake hands, we hug, we kiss. So that is a distinct difference between a place of faith and a, a box store that's selling any essential service where customers aren't having any, any, any interaction with each other. Thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder on our next question, is your church currently offering members specialized services in response to COVID-19? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. We'll give you another 30 seconds to respond to that. And a reminder once again, if you have a question for this call, press 7. Um, and now to our next question. Uh, many people in our community are making masks. How effective are they? Dr. Williford? This is something that we're, we're actively exploring here at the Jefferson County Department of Health. Um, the masks, depending on it, it really depends on the design and how they're constructed. Um, they, they, you know, in in a dire circumstance, which you know we want to avoid, but it's hard to predict exactly what is going to be coming in the next few days. 
uh, if, depending on whether or not more personal protective equipment becomes available. Uh, those masks may, may be needed, and it's something that we're having active discussions about as to how best to utilize and how best to distribute those. Um, but that, that's something that we're, we're still working through here at the health department because um, in, in, in the event of, you know, more people that are not having enough personal protective equipment, those, those could be something. Are they going to be as good as a, the N95 mask that I mentioned earlier? Probably not, but, but are they going to provide some protection? Yeah, they're probably going to provide more protection than nothing. Uh, so it's something that we, we are going to be looking into and something that we, we may be making a call uh, for donations of those. Thank you, Dr. Williford. I'm going to ask our next question for this call. What is your primary or most frequent method of communication with your members? Press 1 for phone, press 2 for texting, press 3 for email, press 4 for face-to-face. -face. Once again, what is your primary or most frequent method of communication with your members? Press 1 for phone, press 2 for texting, press 3 for email, press 4 for face-to-face. -face. We will I uh, have the answer line for that question open for the next three minutes, and then I'll remind you once again, and we'll turn it off. Uh, our next question um, for the mayor, if you will answer this, can individuals still use parks for fishing and other outdoor activities like that? So our outdoor activity, um, if it falls under solitary confinement, then the, uh, some form of solitary confinement or where it doesn't require physical contact with another human being, the answer is yes. So hiking, biking, um, running, skating, um, I imagine fishing would be um, in, that, in that category. The, the, um, I mean, most of us, we don't fish with strangers, so, and we use our own rods. The thing you wouldn't want to have is a situation where several people are on a boat and they are um, watching how they exchange and touch the same thing. So that's a matter of being... Uh, that's a matter of being very careful. Mayor, well, this, this question is for both. Uh, how does the mayor and Jefferson County Department of Health feel about high-risk people participating in a streaming service to read scripture or other actions? This would be for us. I, I, I guess, let me say, if, if they can do it, uh, let me start this off, I think, with the way I'm reading it. If you can do it remotely and they're high risk, it's probably the wisest step to do, wouldn't it be, Mayor? Yes, we. Um, I put. I put. I mean, doc, I think Dr. Wilford would agree with me, but I would like to hear his opinion on this after I say say this, which is, I believe high risk people are in the same high risk defined by age, or defined by existing underlying health issues. Um, these are the type of people I would highly suggest. Please don't leave home. And if there's any way the technology allows um, your service to cut in into that person with the ability to do that from their home, then please use that as an option. In fact, the ordinance that, that you presented and that was passed yesterday, Mayor, uh, specifically mentioned if you were high risk for a serious illness due to COVID-19 to only leave the home for, uh, for medical needs. That's correct. Dr. Williford? I agree with that completely. Uh, you know, because we, we talk about these people, uh, the, the highest risk groups are going to be those over the age of 60, uh, those with chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease, uh, people with uh, underlying weakened immune systems. Uh, those are the people who are going to be at highest risk. And if there's a way that they can participate but do it in a digital fashion where, where they don't have to come in, that really is the safest thing for them uh, just because the, the, the chances of a, of a uh, worse outcome for them if they got COVID is, is higher. Let me add to that because I am very keen and sensitive to this question. If this question is practical and I, I, I make it apply to the average um, faith leader on this church as it relates to your members, then those who are active and, and play an active role and or lead in the actual program side or how you would how you go about your service, then a lot of those people would fall in one of these two categories. So um, what I'm what I'm hoping for on this phone is that many of you all have members that are very creative and can figure out a way um, in using some form of technology um, that people 
can participate who you want to participate. I like the simple version. Everything doesn't have to be on social media. Everything doesn't have to be streamed. Just like 100 plus people are on this phone call right now, every faith leader is in a situation, I believe, that just like your members, uh, I imagine most of your older members actually have a landline. If a pastor is able to present, of a faith leader, I'm sorry, if a faith leader is able to have some form of their traditional service and have members call in who don't have access to the Internet, the ability to pick up their landline, call a number, and listen to you over the phone, no different than they would be if they only had access to a radio and were able to listen to you by radio as well. So I wouldn't limit everything to an online service um, or streaming service or social media. I think I think radio is still an option. I definitely think um, a, a senior member of the church's ability to pick up a landline and dial into a dial a number and be able to hear um, the service is really a great option as well. And Mayor, just to let folks know, on the previous question we asked about what is your primary or most frequent method of communications with your members, 52% of respondents said texting, 25% said phone, 17% said email, and 5% said face-to-face. So that goes to your point with those communications pieces. We've been going for about 40 minutes. We want to try to get through just a few more questions very quickly. I want to I want to, to close out this next call. Oh, actually, is that, is that call been closed, or is that still live, that last question? Um, it's open. Okay. We're going we're gonna to let folks answer one more time on that one. What is your primary or most frequent method of communication with your members? You have 30 seconds to respond. Press 1 for phone. Press 2 for texting. Press 3 for email. Press 4 for face-to-face. Uh, let's let's move through these next questions. Dr. Williford, this is a question uh, that's been asked in a couple of different ways uh, on this call. Is there a vaccine vaccination being looked in to handle this virus? Most certainly, and that because that is one of the that is one of the greatest public health needs right now that we we have. Um, the the hard part about vaccines is that. Uh, so they, they, so I will say we're, we're, what we're ahead on with this is that there are some candidate vaccines that are being tri- tried right now, the, but they're being done in a controlled fashion because at the end of the day, we have to know if this vaccine, does it actually do what it says it will do, and is it safe for people? And so there's a very, stri- uh, very structured process that it has to go through to prove that it does work and that it is safe. Um, so at best, we're probably looking at about this time next year uh, before a vaccine would be ready, and, and, and that's, that's assuming that everything goes perfectly well and it works exactly as we expect. I hope it will be by then, but there is the chance that it could be a little bit longer. And then once it's approved, there also comes the, the, the hard part of it having to be produced. Um, it, it will have to, factories will have to come online to be able to produce the, the, the vaccine. But I do, I do have confidence that we will see it. It's just we're not going to see it extremely quickly, which, is, which makes me very sad. And one last question, same to you, Dr. Williford, on this. Uh, some pe- or, or is it possible for people with the virus to touch items in stores and to spread the virus to other people in those stores? So for for a person who so the, 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 what we know is clear is that so say, say for a person who's having a cough is having fevers is feeling terrible most certainly that, that, that whenever if if they, if they if they haven't cleaned their hands really well if they're not wearing a mask they can most certainly spread the virus to other places including surfaces what is not as clear but there are a few people who have uh, very early on in the in the course of the illness uh, they have they have some they're they're, they're or spreading the virus or shedding the virus a bit um but we don't know exactly how much and so that that's why we really really drive home this idea of hand hygiene and surface cleaning is because it is sort of an insurance policy against uh, you know, not knowing who has touched something or wh- what you have touched in 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 your day to day activities. So I think that that that's that that's sort of where it is. So it is possible that someone could spread the virus unknowingly. Um, and again, that's why we drive home the importance of service cleaning and hand washing. 
Dr. Williford, thank you. So the time is 1045 right now. We are going to ask one more question and, and then the mayor will close this call out. And I believe we will close out with prayer as well. Um, but before we go there, I do want to remind you of a couple of things when we wrap up this call. One, if you have a question that has not been asked yet, you can stay on the line, or if you have a question that you haven't put in yet, you can stay on the line after this call ends, press seven, and you can leave a message with that question and we'll move quickly to respond to you. Also, another reminder for you, we will, this is gonna be a large file, so it'll take a little while, but we will post this, this phone call, this teletown hall, on birminghamal.gov slash coronavirus. Once again, that's birminghamal.gov slash coronavirus. All the teletown halls that we hold, we have them dated in the subject matter, and we put them there so that you can go back and, and re-listen to this, or we encourage you also to share it uh, with, with fellow faith leaders who may not have been on this call so they can have up-to-date information. Uh, with that, I will ask one final question, and then uh, the mayor will have some, some closing comments and prayer. So our next question, is there a plan to provide for the homeless population? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, we are actively working with One Roof, who serves as an umbrella organization that acts as a convener and connector for all the service organizations that provide um, services to those who are homeless, as well as um, interacts with those who are homeless individuals. Um, with that, a protocol has been set in place for those um, facilities that intake and what's the uh, procedure and protocol on how to engage them, making sure there's not community spread. In addition to that, uh, we continue to provide, and in coordination with One Roof, organizations and churches are engaging, providing food to those who are homeless. And then the third thing is um, we are actively working on hand, signer, hand sanitizer um, stations in public spaces to make sure because a lot of restaurants have closed down, a lot of people um, in our homeless community who are located more on, on the south side and central city, um, there are places that they can engage in cleaning their hands uh, to decrease and or prevent community spread because these places are closed and they're unable to walk in and wash their hands. And we will be presenting a, uh, a, a fact sheet that will provide more detail in what we're doing with various um, organizations, organizations and various groups, which include um, those who are in our homeless community. With that, um, I want to thank the faith leaders on this phone. I'm reminded at a time like this uh, we are better if we stick together and keep communicating with each other. Um, I, I am well aware that there are elements in this community that see moments like this um, and they try to capitalize off of it for the wrong reason, or, or worse, try to pit people against each other. Um, but if you're on this call, please remind others who are faith leaders that uh, we're all in this together. Uh, please also remind other faith leaders that the number one thing we can do now is not only continue to pray, and, and hold on uh, to our faith, but also to be intentional about um, preventing community spread by making sure we are intentional practicing social distancing because the ultimate goal at this point is to save lives. With that, I turn it over to Pastor Doug Taylor uh, to close us out with the prayer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Woodman, uh, for the call and uh, for the privilege of praying. Uh, let's pray. Father, uh, today in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to come together. God, you said that uh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to come together in unity, Father. Lord, I ask right now your hand on this city. Father, I ask for your uh, angels to be dispatched to uh, protect us and defend us in all of our ways, God. Today, I pray for our mayor, Mayor Randall Woodfin. God, I pray for his wisdom, his strength, his health, and his well-being as he boldly leads our city through these trying times, God. Father, I pray for his staff and his team, God, that uh, as they commit to serve our city, uh, that you will continue to watch over them, Father. You said in the multitude of counsel there is wisdom. So I thank you for their uh, faithful leadership uh, in this season, God. I ask that you will help us as pastors to honor this, our leader, 
during this time to make this this a season of assistance and not a season of angst for him, God. You said that we should obey them to have the rule over us and submit ourselves for they watch over our souls. And we can make this a season of joy and not a season of grief for our mayor. So, God, as we come into agreement today, uh, as we come into adherence, we believe that we will bring this virus to an end, God. So, God, I, I thank you that you will command the blessing at the place of unity. So we call this state of unity today the place that the blessing is being released over Birmingham. Thank you for our health, our wellness, our hope, and our leadership. We honor you now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for joining us for this call today. It will be online later today at BirminghamAL.gov slash coronavirus. Uh, also, if you have not asked a question and you still have a question you would like to ask, after this call is over, please, please press 7. It will be put into the system, and we will follow up as soon as possible. Thank you for all you do in our community, your leadership, your faith leadership, and have a good day.